It's Friday, October 24th, 2014. I'm Jimmy Principe. And I'm Trey Comstock. You're putting your final orders because this is Tech's Last Call, episode 93. Your last call for Tech News of the Week tonight. Jimmy holds a room about Ello's business plan, and I settled China's Apple's China problem with a contactless payment. Uh, but we start tonight with uh, a battle between the world's great economic titans, Apple Inc., and the government of China. Yes, like uh, Apple and China, like uh, Google and Samsung, make for great frenemies. Um, Apple may spend billions of dollars in China manufacturing all those devices, but in this case, someone set up a man-in-the-middle attack for Chinese users of iCloud and Microsoft Web Services to coincide with the launch of the new iPhones in China. The way the attack works is that the attackers have redirected those who seek to log into iCloud or Microsoft to a fake page. The victims enter their login information on these fake pages, thinking it's the right one, and then are taken into the actual service. However, the attacker now has the target's login information. Now, these happen in phishing schemes all the time, but in this case, it's happening to anyone trying to access these services on China Telecom and China Unicom, China's largest um, internet providers. It's happening at the backbone level. Let me reiterate. So there's like your home level, and then there's like a, a server. The server level, and then there's the backbone level. And who might have access to the backbone? Wait, well, wait, wait, don't tell me. Well, the government of China flatly denies these accusations. <laughs> And Apple's advice about how to avoid the problem doesn't mention the Chinese government or China in any way. Yet, Tim Cook, Tim Cook flew to China and met with Vice Premier Ma, Ma Kai, whatever. Um, according to the official statement, Chinese Vice Premier and Apple Inc. CEO Tim Cook on Wednesday exchanged views on protection of user information during their meeting in some Chinese city I can't pronounce. Zhongnanhai. Yep, that. They also exchanged views on strengthening cooperation in information and communication fields. Right. So, in case this sounds good. In case no, it doesn't. I know how to write a press. That sounds like it was deliberately. It was a fight. Um, so to me, this meeting is a tacit. The meeting itself is a tacit accusation by Tim Cook against the Chinese government. Um, who do you think done it? Um, the Chinese, Chinese government, government seems right? Yeah, right. like okay. The the one that pointed this out though had kind of a uh an advantage of claiming it was a chinese government it was the uh greatfire.org yeah greatfire.org which are the ones that kind of like call out china for their firewall bs right it's the, the, so, the, the their name is a play on the great wait, wait. firewall of china wasn't 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 it them that had like all of the Chinese servers yeah. rerouted through yeah, them and once. broke the internet? Yeah, yeah, I remember that. <laughs> I believe that, that was, was them. That happened that, once. That was pretty funny. <laughs> that was pretty hilarious. Instead of blocking it, we opened it to everybody. And it looked like it was basically like a keystroke mistake on the part of some Chinese official somewhere that was like, oh, I I didn't set that up. <laughs> oh shit. I was supposed to hit no, and instead I hit yes. No, I was supposed to hit, like, restrict, and instead I hit reroute. <laughs> they look so similar on the keyboard. Good job there. Yes, very I good. I mean, I'm, I'm going to go with obvious. It, it seems fairly obvious to me that at least Tim Cook thinks that the Chinese government, if they were not directly involved, were at least indirectly 
helped out by this occurring, aka well, even if someone else did it, they almost certainly shared the information with the Chinese government. But this is a, but this is China. What isn't the government? I mean, you look at the telecoms and the dead people. The, I mean, the dead people and the U.S. businesses. I mean, like and the Western businesses doing business there. This who are to, being constantly spied on by, by China by the Chinese government. I mean, to get access to the backbone level. Like, I mean, this is like what the U.S. NSA had, or has, depending on who you believe, um, when they had that special room inside AT&T. This is like that special room inside AT&T, which, instead of just storing the encrypted data, not really being able to do anything with it, seeks to make that data unencrypted by, rather than just salvage, you know, taking in information, deliberately tricking people into giving you the information that they want. But again, this is happening at the backbone level. And something happening at the backbone level, to me, implies a major player. So either Ty China Telecom and China Unicom both decided that what re an ISP really should be doing is a man-in-the-middle attack. Or... <laughs> It's the Chinese government. They were government. instructed by someone to well, do a man-in-the-middle attack. To do a man-in-the-middle attack. And I think it's that one. So clearly it's China. And clearly Tim Cook went to say in coded language, Hey, stop that. <laughs> hey, this is part of you a, want us to keep doing stuff here, right? Or do they? I mean, that, but that's the thing. That's a, but that's a good question. Who knows? Well, they've stepped up their assault on a Apple and... Microsoft specifically. So let's keep in mind the iPhone was iPhone six was delayed in China because it didn't meet regulatory approval. Um, right. Microsoft's offices were searched as part of an antitrust investigation. Um, because be the nineties called. Well, and China has banned Windows eight from being st installed on government computers yeah, because they there's... stopped supporting Windows XP. Right, Again, and they still have Windows XP on all of their machines. Well, right. Well, it, Windows XP is like 96% market share in China, and how many of those were paid for? None of them. Um, actually, such <laughs> funny story. Such an Adelic kind of admitted that in a speech this week. Uh, this is not in the rundown, but it's kind of funny. He was talking about how Microsoft's going to be moving to a freemium, more focusing on a freemium model, um, where... For some services, you don't pay at all. Then if you want extra features, or if you want those features for corporations, you pay. Um, any Which is the Google Apps model. Well, Sacha argues it's always been the Microsoft way. It's just the free part was piracy. <laughs> <laughs> and he's not wrong. He's not wrong about that. That That is pretty funny, though. That, yeah, it's that pretty he funny. Would so blatantly say, yeah, people steal stuff from us. So Microsoft, to a certain extent, is in is so big in China because they just were stores full of pirated software. Um, a lot of it made by Microsoft. Rampant including, piracy. Rampant piracy. It, you know, one of the biggest not talked about things with China is just the rampant abuse of intellectual property. It's just rampant that there are China and Russia. No, but. I, China but China is a much larger player in the international marketplace. Right. And so the fact that like m a lot of US IP rights are in no way honored over there and then they want to get on us for antitrust off of stolen software like this is, you know, I get really frustrated with China pretty quickly and this is a pretty blatant attempt at being able to get at specifically like business people like people who can afford iPhones get into their private lives right because you know it's not your average Chinese person on the street that's able to afford a thousand dollar phone um, it's you know business people it's yeah. movers and shakers it's the middle class it's the people yeah, it's that the might middle class. that might also be really interested in an even more freer society Though, arguably, I think everyone might be a little more interested in a freer society. So it's China. And this is just another one of those great firewall stories that we keep bringing up. Because it's important that you understand that China... It's a bad place. China's a bad place for the internet. And it's continued... Like, we talk about the Snowden leaks. And we talk... You know, the U.S. is in no way kind of does not have his hands clean in this game. And that's one of the things that makes the Snowden leak so disappointing, is that given how 
blatant. We, well, we can't take the moral yeah, high we ground. We lost the moral high ground, given how blatant China's whatever is. Like, we had a chance at a moral high ground, and then we gave it away for questionable intelligence. Now, who knows? Maybe a thousand terrorist attacks a day are stopped because of the NSA. And we did catch Osama bin Laden because we intercepted one phone call of a guy talking to his mother. And that's literally how we got him. Um, so it, occasionally it's paid off, I guess. But we've lost the moral high ground with China. And you can see in, in the Hong Kong protests that with a modicum of Internet freedom, which... Hong Kong has over mainland China. For instance, there's a Google in Hong Kong. Um, there may even be Google Facebook. Google.hk. Yeah, there may even be Facebook. Um, I don't know, but there isn't Facebook in mainland I, I China. I don't actually know either. Although um, Zuckerberg was in China this week and spoke Mandarin also, in public. Also not in the rundown. <laughs> also not in the rundown, but we're talking was, about China. I was told he could speak Mandarin um, like a seven-year-old like seven with marbles in their mouth. Yeah, well, you know. Says the man who wanted a sandwich Moss Fork Day. <laughs> yes, no, I wanted a very strong sandwich. Right, so, like, you kind of understand. Like, he's trying. Um, I, I think the only inter the only right interpretation of that story to me is, hey, he's trying. Um, it is the world's largest economy. Um, certainly in terms of people in, who could become users of Facebook. I mean, Potentially. They, they can't currently become users of <laughs> yes, Facebook. Because, you know. The Great Firewall. Because well, because it's blocked. It's blocked because it can anything, any non-government controlled social network can simply be used to overthrow said government. <laughs> turns out. Turns well. I mean, turns out Facebook's not the only way to do it. We were doing this on the internet before there was Facebook, and we were doing this in real life before there was the internet. Um, but the internet certainly helps with that. Using a Chinese specific example, Tiananmen Square. Organized by fax machines. No joke, organized by fax machines. Probably the last useful thing a fax machine ever did. Well, it was 1989, so there wasn't the web. It was actually an example I used in my thesis um, was China in 1989 and its use of fax machines. Fun fact. I, you know, I. That, you that is actually really interesting, though. Yeah, I didn't know that. Machine, faxes. Mm -hmm. This day in Apparently, history. I used to I used to flirt with a girl over fax when I was in second grade. We would uh, fax things back and forth. That's back when faxes didn't use normal printer paper. They used that like heat. The dot matrix with the rolls. And no, the... no, this was the heat paper. It was still a roll, but it was more like a cartridge. And it was heat sensitive paper. It wasn't the dot matrix where it would just pull because that was normal printer paper in the early nineties. Mm -hmm. That could pass as normal printer paper in the early 90s. No, it uses a special roll, and we would just, like, burn through those. Um, we got in a lot of <laughs> trouble. That's also, like, in high school when I got in trouble for 3,000 text messages a month. Which, again, in 2002 was, like, $300 Expensive. of text messaging. Um, it's more than I pay in for Your three entire smartphones phone now. Um, and that's saying something, because I pay for it. Three smartphones. <laughs> And still have not managed, only through international calling have I ever managed to beat my high school text messaging record in terms of cost. And I don't think... I don't think that's something you really want to strive for. Well, I, some, I mean, international, sometimes it's just necessary. If I've got to run business um, in foreign countries, sometimes it's just costly. With your cowboy hat and your boots. Yep. That's, I understand how that goes. Yep. That's definitely how I handle my business. So, <laughs> Yeah. I'm a technology pioneer. Um, Louise Douglas was the girl I was flirting with over a uh, fax machine in second grade. Maybe it was third grade at that point. It went on for a while. But yeah. It's how I still know her phone number so well. Can yep. that please be the show title, Flirting by Fax Machine? Flirting by Fax Machine. Yep. <laughs> Write it down. Might as well. So speaking of Facebook... <laughs> and flirting? And flirting by fax machine. Apparently Facebook needs to get a room? Yeah, this week Facebook announced the return of the chat room. That's right. Facebook's uh, Creative Labs introduced the uh, standalone app called Rooms, which allows users to create rooms where you can make a screen name that is, you know, whatever you want it to be, somewhat anonymous. XXX um, Naruto Fan 420 XXX. Trace will no longer be anonymous now that he shared it with the internet. <laughs> uh, says Naruto fan 420XXX. And invite people to the room using a QR code or whatever. There, there's multiple different means of 
inviting people into the room and then chat about things. Um, main advantage appears to be that the room can be moderated by any in any way you want. And you can use an uh, anonymous screen name. You can use any kind of anonymous screen name. XXX420, Facebook, Naruto fan, XXX. Uh-huh. Something that Facebook recently got in trouble about with... Um, and, and it's not fully their fault, but their real names policy. Um, and that there's no specific information really associated with it, like your Facebook account. Um, so Josh Miller, the creator of the app within Facebook, clarified that the app is not, in fact, anonymous. Um, it's not intended to be, but that it is a reinvention of kind of Web 1.0, and it, it's trying to pull the best parts of the old Internet um, and use some new things, new ideas from Tumblr and Twitter and Snapchat and Facebook and Instagram and everything. Um, now, Rooms is currently available exclusively on iOS, um, although they did kind of say maybe eventually they'd have an Android app sometime next year, probably, some say. Um, so, Trey, do you have any desire to set your aim away message on Rooms and really bring it back to the 90s? I always have desires for aim away messages. <laughs> I, I, my disappointment with most messaging services now is... Is that they don't have away messages. They don't have an away message. Hey, um, Link has away messages. Interesting. But the real point is I don't need an away it's message. Built on, like, because it's built Messenger because you what, know, reasons. Yeah. Because at what point am I away? Right? Like, I can't... Unless I'm sleeping, I can always get messages. I mean, technology changed so that we don't need away messages, and that's one reason why we have statuses and tweets now, is we can't just have the most emo thing ever posted to the internet, which was, by the way, the best thing. No, that's a status. Status. Yeah. Statuses are the most emo thing ever posted on the internet. But my statuses are seldom emo. Maybe it's just my life stage. Like, why would I post this in my Facebook status while my guitar gently weeps? Which that would have made a a, a great away message. And you have ellipses now, dot, 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 while my guitar gently weeps. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But again, why would I post that to Facebook? I, I because then I'm other not. people would continue the song for you in the comments. Yeah, that's really I've not. I've seen that happen before. Yeah, not really not what I'm going for. Um, and some of that, obviously, is life stage. I get that. I'm, I'm going to be really honest, though. This sounds simultaneously kind of kind of like, okay, well, we, we've been here before, and... I guess chat rooms were a good idea. I mean, you could, it's got MMS stuff. Like you can put pictures and videos and things in the, the chat room and it can be, you know, location based and whatever. But it, it just sounds so dumb. Is this just going to turn into like every other chat room and just devolve into cyber sex? Yes. Right? Yeah. Okay. Yes. And so you, you'll just have a whole bunch of po- people posting a slash s slash l age slash sex less location for those of you who don't actually know what that means um which is really just code for i want to have cyber sex with you um you would just go into ho- I, I used to spend a lot of time in the chat rooms of Napster um uh, when i was a child that's a terrifying place really um, when we first got broadband my dad downloaded napster and showed me what it was um so i could download music and little be a cool did kid. he know um, and so what I did is I did download music, and I also spent a lot of time on the chat rooms um, of of uh, of Napster. Having learned, chat room sex? Huh? Having chat room sex? No, actually. Watching chat room sex? Actually, no. That's no, because ha- I I learned that it happened in the private messages. So you'd post <laughs> your a a slash s slash l, okay, and then. That would be an invitation. Someone would then PM you, and that's how it would work. And so that happened once, and then I left. See, because the um, the argument is that this is really just a return of the forum, which never really went away. Is no, my forums point. have never gone away? Are you kidding like, me? Like forums that's are how still Gamer around. Gate exists is because of forums. like. Well, and then you have the most successful forum on the internet, Reddit. Reddit, 4chan. Well, like, there's a forum. So, I I don't exactly. I, I guess this is a void that could be filled. Also, how much if they developed it in house? Maybe they use it in house for things. This is like this seems almost like a Google ten percent project. Um, maybe. Someone's like, you know what? Let's make a chat room app. Well, 
then kinda they're like, like, oh, that looks cool. Let's use, let's just release that as a separate app. I kind of like can sell the, ads like, against it. I like the location based thing. Actually, Maybe that'd be great for conferences or <laughs> concerts or. Okay, yik yak, man. Burning. It's like yik yak, except it's less anonymous. Cause I was know. listening. I was listening to it, and I was reading. I read one of the articles. Uh, I think it was the TechCrunch article about it that said that you know it's not like you know where you just get a uh, an anonymous stream of information, and you can't control what the information is. No, Trey, we don't want to know what your most recent yak is. No, I was gonna do Emery's top yak of the day. It's a new segment <laughs> we're doing. We're premiering on the show. Emery's top yak of the day. The amount of Long Islanders here just tripled. 85 upvotes. That was this week's Emery's Yik Yak of the day. If you have suggestions for Emery's Yik Yak of the day, Post please them submit to them to Emery's Yik Yak. yak. <laughs> and, and get your friends to upvote it. Specifically on Thursday or Friday, whenever we record this show. Or Monday or day. It's whenever we record the show. Just repost it every day. Just repost it every day. That one, no one will get annoyed at that at all. <laughs> I'll notice though, because I read every every <laughs> yik yak that every yak that yeah, Emery yicks, I read at the moment. I I really feel in touch with the undergraduate culture. Um, I really do. Um, does Rice have a yik yak? I'm sure it does. I'm gonna down. Okay, so for the the other show, I will download yik yak and see what Rice's yik yaks are. Yeah, and share them. It's, you know, I, I'm learning about the sexual and bathroom no. norms of the Emory undergraduate community as expressed in their yaks, that they yik. I assume that's how that that's what the verb is. I don't know. None of my friends actually use yik yak because we're graduate students and we're entirely too good for that. <laughs> Trey is a yak predator. I, I'm not. I don't actually like <laughs> try to meet people. I, I don't even know how you do that. Um, a slash S. A slash S. L. I'm just gonna start posting a slash a slash S slash L because these people were in utero when that was a thing, right? Like you would go on teen chat in the middle of the night, and you know it would just be flooded with a slash S slash L. Um, I I see those periodically. I run into that on like BuzzFeed or whatever, and like a chill goes down my spine. I'm like, oh god, <laughs> that like, hasn't uh, died off yet. I thought we thought we got rid of that as a culture. Because like chat rooms seemed like it's such a great idea, right? Like I wanted to find out about new music. Like I was getting into punk rock, and so I'd go to the punk forums or the alt forums, and all the alt forums were were a slash s slash l. I was like. Oh, God, it's just like, a, like we've discussed before. The lowest common denominator of the internet, right? But like, you know, I was thirteen or whatever. But I even then I knew like these are probably just like forty year old dudes, right? Right? Like this is not a good probably. idea. This is not like bad. So, but so my thing is, this is just going to turn into you know group cyber sex. Um, I, the, but hey, if it's location based, it may be able to turn into real sex. Or you can <laughs> confirm the A slash S slash L of the person sitting next to you who is definitely not a nineteen year old girl from London, it's location based. Unless you are in London. Then it's not a nineteen year old girl from Melbourne. <laughs> Bunch of savages. <laughs> Anyways. Speaking of bunch of savages, oh, what's going God. on with Ello? So the new social network, Ello, that we reported on a couple of weeks ago uh, with the whole real name policy with Facebook, um, they're really serious about this no ads thing. Um, in fact, they're so serious that they've made their no ads ever policy legally binding by becoming a public benefit corporation. So, so you might ask yourself, what does that even mean? PBS. Yes. Bear with me. Well, it, it technically it's the Corporation it's for, for Public, public Broadcasting. Oh, trust me, I watched a lot of PBS, PBS as a child. Um, it's brought to you by the Corporation, Corporation for, for Public, public Broadcasting. Broadcasting. Right? Yeah. Yep. See. Okay. <laughs> it's been ingrained into you since you were born, thanks to Sesame exactly. Street. Exactly. Now, a public uh, benefit corporation is a type of company that, in addition to serving the best interest of you know their investors by doing things like making money, um, their money. charter states that the public benefit will be part of their goals as well. So a lot of times, like port authorities are public be yeah. benefit corporations. Uh, the public, the corporation for public, for public broadcasting. broadcasting is a public benefit corporation. 
Um, but it's kind of weird for a technology company to, to go this route. It's a very different model for a modern technology company. Now, for Ello, the way that they've kind of manifested Ello this... Ello is not a modern <laughs> technology corporation. They're, they're not anything, really. Um, I think the note was that they raised $5.5 million in funding, um, which I think Google like sneezes that much. Um, Apple lost t- a hundred times that on a Sapphire boondoggle, which also got settled this week. Uh, yeah, th- I did hear about that one, too. Um, so for Ello, this manifests itself in kind of three points. One, this is quote, one, Ello shall never make money from selling ads. Two, Ello shall never make money from selling user data. And three, in the event that Ello is ever sold, the new owners will have to comply by those terms. That's end quote. That's a quote from the release that Ello, um, released, I guess, yesterday about the fact that they were becoming a public, uh, benefit corporation. So I, I guess what we really have to ask is, do we think that a bold move like this is going to convince people that Ello is the social nest network where they want to be? Or does Facebook just have such a stranglehold on the market that it really doesn't matter at this people point? People will want to, like, okay. So have you ever seen the movie um, The Little Mermaid? There's Under a, the sea? No, there's a song about I want to be where the people Dar- are. Darling, it's better down where it's wetter. Take it from me. I was Sorry. going with I want to be where the people are. Oh. People want to be where the people are. The people are. And what guess an where op- the people op- aren't? Ello. Whoa. Well, guess where people are the Facebook. <laughs> well, here's the thing. So Ello has one million users and three million users on a waiting list who can't I, get I, in. Because I am one of the three million, by the right, way. I tried be- to sign up. Because the last they- I covered Ello. Because their server infrastructure isn't there. And so the 5 million is theoretically going to go to being able to accept the next 3 million. But again, so people, so I heard some analysis from a tech journalist I'm not a huge fan of um, that was like, so that means that people clearly are unhappy with their social network. No, it means 4 million people are curious. I'm curious. Right. But I'm I, not going to use the damn thing. I'm on, I'm on Google+. Plus, and I am unhappy I with my current social it. network. Apparently, I've turned off my notifications on Facebook to the point where I no longer engage with Facebook. I turned off all of my notifications. I got tagged in things, apparently. I had to be told by a friend of mine, oh, <laughs> I saw that on Facebook. Really? I guess I wasn't tagged in. Oh, no, you were. <laughs> Who knows what I've been tagged in the past two weeks? Because I've oh, stopped. I'm now. Right, like. I, I'm gonna start tagging you in everything. Just start tagging me in everything. I have no idea. Like you should never have told me this. I only get friend requests by a text message. That's the only thing I get. Um, and also, wait, it's fa- just set up from like back in the days where you could get anything. You could post from your phone by texting back. Well, you still can do that. That still exists. Right? Do you still have that set up? Yeah. But now I don't get any of it, so it doesn't really matter. <laughs> I t- turned off notifications to the point where I no longer use Facebook. So I'm clearly unhappy with my current social networking. But And it, it is be- partly because I'm the product, but it's also because at this point, my face- Facebook's algorithm is actually my problem, right? So they don't just give me a straight linear list of all the people that have posted that are my friends. It's like a curated list based on something, but I get a bunch of things in Polish um, because I spent some time in Poland. I get a bunch of memes from 60-year-old people, and then I miss important things from my actual the people I actually want to hear from. And I have no idea how this algorithm is so screwed up that I don't actually see anything interesting. I just get a bunch of, like, news stories that are patently untrue or memes that I'm not interested in or, again, things in Polish. At least the stuff in Spanish I can read. And that's okay. <laughs> I speak and read Spanish. So that's kind of interesting. Um, but the Polish stuff. Why is the Polish stuff? I don't ever click on it. Why am I still, like... What algorithm gives me just constant Polish things? Well, here's one of the problems with Facebook's al- algorithm, though. When you don't interact with it, they assume you haven't seen it. So they just keep giving it back to you every time. Whereas the stuff that you did interact with, it falls down the list because you interacted with it. Right. So they, give, they want you to give the feeling that you're interacting with new things. But I, I, I just want a like, linear – I want the ability to say, just give it to me chronologically. Right. And they that is literally not an option. Why do I like Twitter? It used to be. 
Why do I like Twitter? I I use fire twi- hose. Well, it's a fire hose. I use Twitter in a slightly different way than I use um, Facebook. Right? I use Twitter as a newspaper. I use Facebook as a I, it's, I mean nothing at this point. I don't, don't use I don't, don't use Facebook. Use Facebook. Um, I use Facebook as a uh, a means of sharing images I've taken. But it's not my favorite way to do. I only do it that way because that's where the people are. The people that I want to see the pictures are on Facebook. And I know that's the only way that they're going to see it. However, the way I always do it is because I have a, a Flickr Pro account. By the way, that renewed and I was not paying attention. So I'm yeah, still paying renewed, for... Mine renewed relatively recently too. I'm still paying for Flickr Pro. But anyways, um, I have a Flickr Pro account and um, I post all of my images at full resolution on Flickr. Now locked down and I... I issue a guest pass link and paste it into my Facebook high resolution images here. Right. And um, my girlfriend recently had the problem that she was trying to print actual, like she, she just moved into a, um, a larger office and she wanted to have physical pictures on her desk and the pictures of her with her friends are all on Facebook. Well, there's such low resolution images that when you print them, they're pixelated. <laughs> like, the the algorithm from the print shop can't fill in the dots well enough to make it not look pixelated. Right, that's a like problem. Take pictures from like two thousand and two, from the three point two megapixel cameras. Like, what's the point of all of the megapixels if you post them to Facebook and Facebook one eats all of the color out of it and makes it look like garbage, and two, it um. <laughs> It so compresses it that it's not actually useful as a physical media device. But, but, so, yes, Facebook has a lot of problems. And I am but it's dissatisfied. With people. But it's not. It's, a, it's with the people on them. So maybe I don't. Maybe Ello is what I want because I don't want to be where the people are. But then what's the point? <laughs> well, right. I mean, Facebook. Well, unless. The people that like so, let's say for example, only the people that you are very close to, you're connected with on Ello. So, and and there was oh, what was that app or that that service where it was like it would restrict your friends to 150 path. friends. Path. path, thank you. Path was big when I started seminary, um, and a lot of my friends were actually using Path. I never really got into it because again, I think I don't want a social network. I, I yeah. think the conclusion is my You reach out to the people that you want to be connected to. Right. You I don't share images. Call for example, a certain trip that we took in, you know, no, I don't, and I don't. June, June, July has not been posted no. by either you or your lovely wife. No. I think she's posted some, I think. She posted some um, during the trip, but you, I, your images are still right. and they, out there in the clouds. Yeah, they actually are in the cloud. They're on OneDrive. I know. Um, I... I don't know. I'm not really inter- like I share when I'm doing like work stuff because it's a way of me promoting work stuff. Okay, so if I'm but that like makes social media a work media, not a a media for interacting with your friends. I don't interact with my friends on face. Like I just I don't. You just let that as I don't interact with my friends. That's not entirely true. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I. But then fa- because to me, Facebook isn't fun. So Facebook is a work thing. Whether I am working to stay on top of other people's lives or I am trying to promote something for work, I don't have fun using Facebook. Right? If I want to find dumb stuff, I'll go find my own dumb stuff on BuzzFeed. If I want information, I have a Twitter feed for that. And the what information am I going to get from Facebook? If something really big is happening in the life of someone actually close to me, I'll hear about it. Whether they'll call me, they'll text me, someone will call me or text well, me. And then this is totally unrelated, but, but then you end up with the weirdness of one of the people that I know got engaged and waited three months to post about their engagement on Facebook because they wanted to be able to call and message and communicate with all of the people in their life that they thought should know about it and hear from them before they posted it on the internet. That's so you not end a good up picture these... of me. Which one? The I one that you were tagged the in? The one I was tagged in. <laughs> 52 people liked it, though. 
Hey, how about that, Winston? I'm now going to go down. D damn it, Trey. I have 17 notifications on Facebook. I have 56. Yeah, okay, um, you win. Yeah, no, no joke. Yeah, anyways, you were saying. Waiting um, three months to tell people and blah, blah, blah. And so it just seems like a ridiculous situation we've gotten ourselves into where we don't want to post things. on. For example, I'm not listed as in a relationship on Facebook because well, who cares? <laughs> I am, but I actually, I mean, I you used were, to be. You did, but that was the thing. You were hardcore into it when I, you, I remember, remember you were like, yes, I have, I have changed my relationship status to married on yeah, Facebook. We, we did on the, we did in the, uh, in the limo going from the wedding to the reception. Is when we changed, like, and I, I like live Facebook status my wedding. Like, I posted, was like posting as different things were happening. Um, like, I, 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 mean, I wrote a whole thesis that said Facebooks could be used to over, Facebook could be used to overthrow governments. But the minute right. I stopped actually looking at Facebook academically and it stopped becoming a work interest, I was like, what? I do. What so, is this thing? What, like, who cares? And maybe it's the news feed. I think for me, it really is how messed up the news feed is. Slash, you know, I, you know, actually, my news feed right now is not terrible. Um, but it usually is pretty. Oh, no, here we go. Now it's now it's back to being awful. Good. Okay. Let's see. Right now, I have something from seven hours ago, something from yesterday at um, three o'clock in the afternoon, and then something from nine hours ago. Yep. Like. And then something from four hours ago is like eight posts down. Like, this is a mess. This is a freaking mess. So, I do like this headline. Texas is about to elect a complete wackadoo as its lieutenant governor. <laughs> is that the, the Republican? Yeah, it's, it's just a Jesse he, he is a, com <laughs> he is a complete wackadoo. <laughs> I mean, just, you know. I. Anyways, now that we're totally and completely off the rails. But we're not, because we're talking about the problems with social networking, but I think yeah, some of it, some of it Ello is, is trying to address, but Ello isn't addressing the thing I care about. What I am interested in is really something between Facebook and Twitter, right? Twitter. I don't like the idea of limited you know, messages. You know what that's and, called flipboard. Well, that, that's how I interact with all of these is flipboard. I know, but that's, that's, that is the answer to your problem though. Flipboard combines the social aspects of Facebook with the real news out of Twitter or, or and the New York else, Times or, anything else or whatever. UMR or all of the, you know, I'm, I use Flipboard constantly. I'm on Flipboard all day I know, long. you send me links from Flipboard all the time. Right, because that's how I take in all of my social media is, or all, most of my internet media is done through Flip, that isn't video, is done through Flipboard. It's what I'm looking forward to, once I get my Nexus 9, I'm looking forward to trying out the Flipboard on that form factor, because it doesn't really work well on the phone. It's too small on the phone. So, like, okay, I like the ethical stance that LO is taking, that I'm not the pro that I'm not the product. But really, that's not what I am objecting to, because I keep using Twitter, and I'm the product there, too. A product that they still have not fully figured out how to market, but yes. What? <laughs> Look, dude, you're not wrong. I like. I mean, I they like have, social have networks with problem. very little business plans. I think this is this is the thing. I like the things that have no business plan. YouTube Ello has no business plan. Right. You talking about something that has no business plan? Yeah, but it also is basically just a Facebook clone. It doesn't. Its only stance is its ethical stance. It's not a features stance. So Twitter makes a feature stance. We do something different. We have this limited character, and it's 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 different. Um, it's high speed. It's timeline. It's so like f Twitter has a differentiation. Google Plus arguably has a differentiation because of circles and th things and how it's integrated across all the Google services. Well, and I think that like circles. I, I say that I don't use Google Plus, but like I brush against it all the time because I'm in all the Google services. Well, I've been so actually conducting really... a two week long battle on Google Plus because right. I was responding to YouTube, YouTube comments. comments. Right. So I've never spent so much time on Google Plus. I but yet now I've posted thousands of words to Google Plus. But um, I think that Google Plus has an interest. Google Plus was an attempt to be the middle ground between Twitter and Facebook. Right, and I don't. And but again, Google Plus to me doesn't suffer from a technology problem. It suffers from a it's where the people aren't problem, um, or where the people aren't engaging. It really effectively communicated to people how you're supposed to use it. Right. So Google Plus has its own problems, but it's not the objection I have with Ello. Ello only has a moral stance. 
it doesn't have a like we are really different different features wise and in the end this is still the technology game you well, gotta also win in features data and that's the thing i think is is important to note about lo most of their features they're just trying to get the basic social network features out there for now now part of the reason why i tried to join the beta is because i want to see the thing i want to be able to yeah, but, speak intelligently about what they're actually offering. Yeah, but Jimmy, here's the thing, okay? And we're There's learning no this we're learning this in gaming very quickly that in this day and age where the big complete social networks exist, you can't suck out of the gate. That's true. You don't have that option of being a work in progress. Because people will go there. Right now there's a lot of attention concentrate on LO, but they're going to lose that momentum quickly because there's only they're only able to support 1 million users and are currently not taking new users. Yeah. And so this is just going to fall from the sky. And that's just from a server infrastructure thing. That's not even looking at it as an overall product. <laughs> so you can't you don't have this luxury of being really crappy when you're in beta because Google releases things in beta, and it's Gmail, and it operates for five years as the world's best email service in beta. Wait, wait, do that. I have Gmail it's open right now. not beta anymore. I'm going to double check. They used to have a Google Labs thing yeah. where you could bring, because it said beta for so long right. on Gmail, that you could bring it back so it's a little beta right next to it. This is the dumbest thing in the world. <laughs> but I think that they took it away because I think I had it selected. But I... That was the most awesome labs feature ever. Right. Because it had no practical purpose other than to make it look like the way Gmail is supposed to look. So speaking of potentially no pack practical purpose, um, <laughs> Apple Pay is in the wild this week. I used it to buy dinner. It oh, works. Yes? Um, other tech reporters have used it too. <laughs> and it seems to All of them. And it seems to function well in retail experience. Apparently, it will work on any system using contactless payment, but the official Apple Pay retailers have something like a specific, have specific pushing it. They're specifically pushing it and has like tighter integration or something. Um, well, the people are trying to know what to do. Right. Um, oddly, the in-app experience has been a little weirder. I used it on the Apple Store app, and it worked fine. I bought something I didn't need specifically so that I could test out <laughs> Apple Pay. Um, that'll be fun when it shows up. My, this is worse than eBay. It's just, You're going to have to explain that to your wife. Yeah, well, this explain that to Sydney. Why that's coming to our house when we don't need it. <laughs> um, but I was like, oh, I need something relatively inexpensive that I can test Apple Bay on. So there we go. Um, I So it worked fine there, but Molly Wood uh, from the New York Times found the experience was a bit more was a bit more inconsistent. Um, there were reports of double purchasing on from Bank of America, which to me just sounds a little bit like growing pains. But okay, overall, I will probably use it at the retailers that I know accept Apple Pay, or else it will turn into one of those things like using Amp, using American Express in Europe, where you have to do the dance of like, do do you accept this? Do, do you accept this? Oh no, you don't. Okay, at the swipe. Um, so it's not like you just leave my wallet at home. Um, so I still have to carry my wallet. So I'm not totally sure what this is for yet. It It's not there. Um, so are you going contactless from now on? Um, I keep meaning to, since Apple Pay was announced, I keep meaning to use it, um, my Google Wallet app on my phone. Now, Google Wallet and Apple Pay do not work the same way. And I'm not saying that, so people no, don't get angry at me. Because um, uh, Google Wallet functions as a credit card, whereas Apple Pay takes your existing credit card, tokenizes it, so that it, you're only ever giving a retailer a one-time code, and um, but it's integrated with your existing banking and then, credit and then card. And Touch ID makes sense, because yeah. it's Trey will attest before the show. I was trying to log into my Google Wallet, and I went, oh, crap, what's my PIN? And for <laughs> me, like, I was at, in the checkout line at, at a Whole Foods in Atlanta, um, and I just sort of like hovered my phone near the contactless thing and it just, my credit card popped up and it said, put, put your thumb on the thing. And so I put my phone on the thing and then I bought dinner like that. Like as a technological experience, it's cool. Um, but I saw my wallet in my back pocket in case it so all went sideways. So here's the question. So I have a phone in my pocket. I have a wallet in my back pocket. I can either pull the phone out and tap this. 
or I already am going to have my wallet with my credit card in it, or I pull my wallet out and swipe the card. I know that both what methods work, but I don't. So Tom Merritt is the one that, that kind of made this point. The geofencing with Square was the best solution thus but far. No one, because like, no one, no one used it. No one, no, but, no, no. no. And but it was I, the so I every time I see except swear I try to use a geofencing and the person at the desk or the counter does not know how to use it. And they're like, oh, I've never done that before. What are you kidding me? The, Square is not just a cheap credit card reader. It's actually something interesting. It's very interesting. But no one Except knew how to it's use not, it. No one's, no one's really been taught how to use it. But I think technologically, not not as far as like people that know how to use it, not as far as the actual experience in the wild. Technologically, I think that is the best solution because you don't have to take anything out. You just you know say say what your name is, and it's like everybody knows your name, and you're just good to go. But with um, with both Apple Pay, Google Wallet, um, and a credit card, a traditional credit card. I still pull something out of my pocket and interact with a device. Now, so NFC has been a big deal in Japan for a really long time, like a decade. And it's gotten to the point there where you don't necessarily need a wallet. Everything you can just pay for by tapping your cell phone against a thing. If we get there, then I'm just leaving my wallet at home or I leave my driver's license in my car for if I ever get pulled over. Not that that ever happens. Um, (laughs) Then that to me is interesting. But to right. me, until yes. Apple Pay is everywhere, or until everything can be paid for by NFC, NFC might as well be nowhere. It actually doesn't add any convenience to my life. It's just an oh wow feature. It's not. It's not worth a damn. And and so why you know why do I want this? Why do I need this? Until right. it's everywhere. And now two hundred thousand locations sounds like a lot, but. That's not everywhere. And the specific Apple Pay retailers where the people are going to know how to work with it are even fewer than that. So, like, you can't even do it at Starbucks. You have to use the Starbucks app, um, which is not a terrible app experience. But, again, like, Apple Pay needs – and touchless right, payments and need I've, to be everywhere. I use the Starbucks app. That's that's fine. Now, here's an interesting thing I've noticed, though. So the U.S. is about to transition to all chip and pin. Um, so that all of our cards will have the little chips in them. And so Verifone had to put out a new generation of... Right, of, my, my new card has a, yeah. a chip on it. Yeah. Um, our Verifone, which is kind of the one of the major payment processors, is has rolled out a whole new generation of, of payment systems in preparation for chip and pin. These are the same payment systems that are shown off in the Apple ads about Apple Pay, which makes me think they're all contactless payment enabled. So we're actually, Apple is hitting this at an interesting inflection point when almost everyone is going to have to be upgrading their payment systems anyways. Right. And now it's a feature that people can roll out so that they have something that will draw users in. You can put the Apple Pay on the door. Right. But what I mean is that we may get quicker to it being everywhere than I'm talking about. Right. Because well, everyone's cycling their payment processing hardware. Right. And we discussed that when we did the when we talked about the announcement of Apple Pay. Right. Was that this is kind of something that's rolling out already. So we shouldn't expect a really long time until it's going to be rolled out to well, everyone. Right. But I'm not really going to be happy until I can leave my wallet in my car. Right. And then you start running into the problem of okay, I left my wallet in my car. What about my uh, my driver's license? Well, yeah, you're gonna have to learn to carry your driver's license in your pocket, right? So that when you get ID'd, um, this is probably not a problem that a lot of consumers have, um, but it is a problem that periodically happens to me. I look like I'm 12. Um, so speaking of things I might have been interested in when I, when I was 12, it's this week's last call. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's also kind of geeks anonymous. Oh, yeah. You have, you have that queued up? I'm fast. Was without a doubt the worst episode ever. I think we should call it your grave. Uh, curse your sudden but inevitable betrayal. Ah. I really just wanted to hear sudden and inevitable betrayal. Sudden and inevitable betrayal. So in Back to the Future 2, the one that we try not to talk about as much as possible because... Back to the Future 3 was an apology. Um, where 
Marty McFly travels 30 years forward in time to 2015. He sees a world very much not like the one that we live in, uh, with flying cars and all kinds of crazy things. However, one of the promises for the children of the 80s was hoverboards. And guess what? It exists. Sort of. Kind of, maybe. Um, really. The company that created it, which is a there, – there is actually a functioning hoverboard. It exists. Sort of. Is one. One. Sort of. One of them. No, sort but of what a it hoverboard. Does, it's sort of a hoverboard. Right. And so, I get that it functions, but it's sort of a hoverboard. So it's a, it's a startup called Arcs Packs, and they're, they're really – they did a crowdfunding thing where they're selling these white boxes that hover for people to do stuff with. They'll lift 40 pounds on a 15-minute charge. Um, they built this hoverboard. And uh-huh. what it does is it needs a aluminum or copper surface underneath it because uh-huh. it basically turns it into an electromagnet and repels itself up off of this surface. Now, as a result of that, it takes a crap load of charge yep. in order to do that so the hoverboard only lasts for about 10 minutes is kind of what it read like and it has 90 pounds in batteries so um, there's an article on Gizmodo about actually riding on the hoverboard and how this thing really works No, it doesn't. Um, but not can really can I go over water no can I go over anything that isn't well, copper either- Neither could Marty McFly's, mind you. It hovered, but it, the, the pro- propulsion didn't work so well on water. Well, this hover on water. I remind you. Yeah, I remember. It will not hover over water. It will only hover over copper and aluminum, right. basically. So Highly it's... conductive metals that are non-ferrous. Right. Um, no, I get that. So, yeah, it's interesting in concept, but it won't. Nope. will not be coming to Toys R Us near you for the 2015 holiday season. And I, even if it did, I, what would you do with it? This is not a hoverboard. They have not figured out hoverboard technology because what are we going to do? Pave the streets in copper? That sounds like an expensive proposition. I, this is I, th- copper. It's going to be big. No, this is a, this is borderline, a, not a hoax, but a, it's a gimmick. It's um, total gimmick. In a way that, Just... I mean, I get that hoverboards were kind of always a gimmick, but they probably were a gimmick even in the, the world of Back to the Future 2, but... This is not this is not a thing. But it's important to note that this is really just a marketing ploy for the white box thing, which is like three hundred dollars. It's a crowdfunding thing and what and what does it do? Nothing. Okay. So, so is the future of floating utopia tray? M- maybe, but not this not is with not this. this is not a step in that direction. Um <laughs> This got way more play this week than it really should have. There are com- actual companies that have perfected hover bikes. That's interesting. And it isn't using electromagnets. Hover bikes. Like using... Oh, no. Those are the ones where they have the giant fans. Right. They're just basically like, quadcopters like, that you ride. But like, yeah. They're just big ride-along hover- hovercopter. Quadcopters. Yes. Those are great. Those, those are, are real. Awesome. Now, I Those get that this is, looks more like repulsor technology from Star Wars, but in Star Wars, they didn't have to play, pay the entire planets in copper for it to work. So I'm just not, like, this does <laughs> not get me going in any way, shape, or form. This is just like, oh, we can call it a hoverboard, we can get publicity. It's not a hoverboard. I mean, it's a board that hovers. It's, yeah, <laughs> okay, <laughs> way to go. Like, I can... Do create a similar effect with like some tin foil and some wire. So like, don't. I was gonna go with tin foil in the shape of a hat, but whatever. I mean, don't. This is just like, oh, you know, it was a great movie. Not Back to the Future Two. So let's play on the one cool thing from that movie: the shoes that Nike did. That was cool. This the, the, the self. What the, the, was, it, was it? Self zipping. No, self, no, no. I they made remember. the shoes from Back to the Future Two. Oh, that's right. Okay. I, I thought you were just talking about like the shoes in the movie, well, not no, just they, the ones that they made in real life. No, but they, so Nike released a limited edition that looked like the shoes from Back to the Future 2. That was kind of cool. I was kind of into that. I like a cool shoe, you know, and that still functions as a shoe. I mean, it doesn't do any of the fancy things from the movie, but it didn't claim to. It was just like, hey, look, it's a shoe. This is claiming to be a hoverboard, and it's not. Also, <laughs> 90 pounds of batteries. Like, you also, know. Like, According to OSHA, you need two people to lift that. Right. 
So on that note, it's time to end. Thank you so much for joining us in this episode of Text Last Call. If you think I'm wrong about the hoverboard, you're wrong. Um, send <laughs> feedback to podcast at textlastcall.com, facebook.com slash textlastcall, pinterest.com or sl- slash textlastcall, or at textlastcall on the Twitters, but not about the hoverboard. We will However, ridicule you pub- publicly right. on the podcast. However, though we might read it on the podcast, too. However you find us, we're seeing you on the interwebs and not on hoverboards. <laughs> I think the name of the episode actually needs to be not on hoverboards. Slash S slash L, not on hoverboards. <laughs> <laughs>